Hey guys, I'm Gaspachin. You saw last episode. It's only going to get worse from here. As we saw last time, getting into orbit turned out to be hard. But maybe we shouldn't blame ourselves. Maybe it's the fault of the game and the limitations imposed upon us. So uh, we think we might want to upgrade the launch pad to allow for bigger rockets, because bigger will mean better in this case. However, the cost of that is prohibitive, so we'll have to design another rocket. This time we opt for a three-stage design. Uh, adding more stages is uh, often beneficial to your Delta V, and as we can see here, we have 7900 with this new design. Optimally, you'd only need about 7000. So we, in theory, have some margins. Now we'll see if that's enough in practice. Last time we had problems with our launch efficiency. We went for a very high launch and uh, couldn't really get our gravity turn going. This time, having a three-stage launcher turns out to be very beneficial to us. This will prevent us from going into the very high thrust-to-weight ratio regimes that you will end up with, uh, especially if you're using solid boosters for your first stages. This allows our gravity turn to be very much more shallow, allowing us to aim for an apoapse just outside of the atmosphere, wasting very little precious delta V going up, and instead investing most of our acceleration going sideways. Now, as we saw last time, we, or rather as we said last time, we wanted to go high up early on, to avoid any problems with remote tech. And this will become evident in this launch, uh, how, how the margins are stacked against us. However, in this launch, it turns out not to be a problem and you'll see why in a second. So we're going to switch out to map view to view our trajectory. Uh, without scatterers being set up, that would take all of our attention, so we'll fix that up right away. Now, for those that don't use remote tech, that yellow line is our connection line. As soon as that is broken, we lose connection to our craft. So the idea here is to finish the burn before we lose our connection. However, with this rocket, that turns out not to be a problem because it's a solid rocket booster, so it will keep on firing even if we lose connection. But look at the margins. With the... A stable orbit requiring a peri of 91 kilometers. You can review that footage and see that we're about on the second there. But we got up, up into orbit, we got our rewards, so we got our funding, so we can build a better launch pad, and we're pondering what shall we do with all this well-earned science. Now, with survivability, we get a new experiment. That's going to be nice. Uh, Remember all the tier 1 tech nodes, except for the structural parts expansion node, you can call it, are being researched. So the question is which tier 2 tech node are we going to go for? Is it general rocketry stability or survivability? And here we opt for survivability for the new science experiment and uh, the ability to recover stuff from space, which is going to be very useful for us, contract-wise. To spend our upgrade, we see that developing at the rate of 4.7 science a year is going to be slightly better than 4.4 science a year, so we'll go for that. We also accept new contracts, we go for a manned altitude record, which we think we can do in a while. However, for the moment, we don't really have any parts to stuff our man uh, our, our Kerbals in. We also ponder if we should accept any of these field research contracts, but they all ask for biomes that we cannot quite reach at the moment. So, instead of accepting one of those, we opt for, well, not the Mun flyby, because that's going to be very hard. Instead, we go for the orbit and recovery, which, uh, as soon as we have unlocked survivability, should be a po possibility. Now, this 
is the dark ages of our space program. This is the sub-program that shall live in infamy for ages to come. Uh, since we haven't researched our tier 1 technos yet, to do the KSC research we need to bring in the abuse. And this is exactly what this space program will be called. Um, these are the abuse probes. We're going to launch hybrid rocket boosters which are throttleable and slightly have a slight gimbal to try and perform science near the KSE. Now this is purely down to impatience because uh, sitting around and waiting for, for our tech to research is going to take a while, it's estimated. So we will try to do it with our current technology. It's indeed a, an abuse of the system, but uh, we're going to try and launch a hybrid rocket booster, hover it over to the place we want to do the science, set it down, take the science, and then, then recover the craft. Now, the cost to return of this is, of course, pretty incredible. So we're not worried that uh, it's, it's a waste in that case. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting design. Now, look at the nav ball here. We built this in the uh, SPH. So uh, when we flipped the probe, we really didn't know which way we flipped it, I guess. So um, here I'm trying to accommodate the mech jab and tell it to, to try and lock to to our anti-grade, sort of, for our hover. And now I'm trying to figure out which angle we should head in. Remember, we want to head toward the astronaut complex. We also want to do science from uh, the KSE biome, which, which stretches all around the KSE. So we'll try to fly this with inverted controls and 0.5 gimballing towards our targets and do some science. This is stupid. I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say that right away. Don't, don't do this. Just wait for, for the rovers. That's, that's going to serve you way better. But, I mean, it's a fun challenge, I thought. So I went for it. And um, we see that, well, we, we have wrongly estimated our angles quite a bit there. We're heading toward the SPH rather than the astronaut complex. So we figure, well, let's just break down, uh, try to get from, try to get science from the KSE biome, and then we'll take off again and, uh, and do the science from the astronaut complex. That's going to be fine. But, yeah. Having to watch the uh, the inverted nav ball, trying to steer from that, and uh, trying to mind our vertical speed and our horizontal speed, and everything turned out to be too much of a mental challenge for me. So we go back to the SPH, we flip the probe core, and uh, I don't think we make any further adjustments to our next probe. No. So now we're going to fly it with uh, with regular controls. That's going to be simpler, we estimate. So maybe we can t actually land this thing without this, it exploding. We're going to time warp here a bit in post-production for convenience, because you already saw this fly once. And now we're going to immediately aim for the KSE biome instead of trying to get to the astronaut complex to, to speed things up, because we went uh, quite far last time without really having to. So we're coming in here, we're coming in at a very reasonable speed, we're trying to do a little hover, but I throttle down too slow, so we end up tipping over. But that's fine, uh, we're going to get 98% recovery value from this, so uh, it was basically a free mission, so it's okay that it didn't really fulfill all of the mission parameters. We've just figured, well, let's build another one. And... Uh, We'll go right ahead and do that, I suspect. I suspect. Yeah, there we go. I should probably clear that up in post, but I've been sitting and messing with this episode for ages. Uh, you see, I, I added this uh, 
in the blender sequencer and uh, it has a limit on on the number of tracks you can have in it and uh, it's got an issue full anyways for the next probe we decided that well we want wider lander legs to prevent it from tipping over as you can see because we're running on the level one um, uh, runway it turns out that it's tipping a bit now we, maybe that was just down to us steering maybe we can actually adjust that steering so we'll launch another one identical to that one nope Turns out that even with with proper adjustments and everything and manual steering input controls, that's simply not enough. So we'll add launch clamps because, no, turns out that doesn't work either. Uh, the, the tilt is inherent to the ground and the, uh, actually the launch clamps are offset because of it. So let's just go back to basics. I mean, if the issue is that uh, the craft is imbalanced because it's standing on multiple points well let's 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 just put it down to one point let's remove the the landing gear who needs landing gear anyways we're just flying a solid rocket booster with probe core on it and, and hovering it and trying to aim for a certain spot of the of the KSC. anyways we still uh, misjudge the angle we're coming into here so to adjust this uh, i um, I adjust, uh, well, Mechjab's parameters and try to burn it uh, towards the uh, the west to sort of cancel out our velocity in the eastward direction. And that turns out to work just fine. So now all we gotta do is try to kill our, well, our vertical velocity, our horizontal velocity, just kill all of our, of our velocity basically. Uh, without tilting too much because then it will be unadjustable. So anyways, we're coming in here. We're coming in pretty hot. Oh, tilting. Nope. Oh, well. At least the probe core survived and that's all we need, isn't it? Well, it turns out we're still at the KSE. And this is something I sort of knew already, but I had forgotten. Uh, if you're going for the astronaut complex, you actually need to touch the building to get that biome. Uh, so, without, well, the abuse program was was a fun little program, we'll not look back to it with fond memories, uh, instead we're going to time warp until we have unlocked uh, our uh, engineering tech node. This will give us the rover wheels, it will give us some uh, structural parts, and it will give us the, uh, the uh, outrigger command seat. What's it called? Well, yes, the chair. I I forgot what it's called for for the moment. Really? What? Why? 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 Why do we have this blender? Come on. Uh, so I thought I had this adjusted properly with all the time warpy bits, but um, well, time warping video in Blender is is more of a hack than anything. So. Uh, I'm sorry for all the stills in this video, but to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm fed up with editing this episode. I want to get on with the next one, uh, where we'll not have to do as much time warp, hopefully. Well, we're going to do a lot of time warping in that too, I, I know for a fact, but uh, it will be fewer segments. So yeah, the, the, the issue with Blender is that you can only have 32 parallel tracks, um, so... Um, but tracks don't rescale when you, when you time warp them since it's just a modified track that you applied to the or original track so you end, if, if you're doing stuff like this where you have a lot of uh, segments that need time warping you're gonna end up stacking them on top of each other so you're going to hit that 32 bandwidth limit pretty pretty quickly so anyways we build a standard science rover we're going to take this and uh, do a little bit more of a regular excursion around the KSC. We're just going to drive off the ledge here and... Oh, right. This is 64K, so there's a ledge there. We forgot about that. Now, in uh, in uh, default KSB, uh, this mesh looks identical, uh, only it's uh, offset way further down into the ground. 
so you won't see this sledge here that I'm pointing out a couple of days ago actually. Mm. As for live audio, well um, this is still very early on in production so it turns out that I, that I hadn't actually set up my mic levels correctly. So uh, we're still limited to me doing all this uh, talking in post. Uh, later on we'll, we'll actually have some live commentary and not that it's that exciting to listen to all the time. But uh, yeah, for now everything has had to be edited out. So anyways, uh, this should be able to take us to the astronaut complex very easily. We swing by the SPH for some quick science even though that wasn't part of our contract. And we knock into the, into the astronaut complex there. And uh, this is Capcom. It basically allows you to access the uh, mission control from uh, flight view. And uh, that's very handy if you're going to run certain contract packs like, like this one. So that allows us to ac accept the next science around the KSE uh, instantly. So we're going to pick that up, and we're going to do this a couple of times with this rover to really get our uh, return on investment here. And uh, with that, we decide to unlock uh, the next level of rocketry, and as well as the structural parts for the research point. Anyways, uh, the next thing we do is to wait for aviation to be researched. So now we're going to design our very first plane. And uh, yeah. We're going to start out with the, with the rover we had, we're going to strip away all the unnecessary parts and then we're going to add plain looking parts. Remember we're only using uh, procedural parts here, but that's going to be plenty to, to design a plane here. We're playing with Ferrum Aerospace, so uh, designing a plane is sort of more involved. I mean, the basics is make a plane that looks realistic and it'll probably perform realistically is to mind your center of uh, center of lift and center of mass and it's going to be pretty much fine uh, you can do advanced uh, tricks like tilting your wings uh, adjusting the angle of attack of them and well of course you're going to tweak the way your control surfaces to only act on uh, on the desired inputs but uh, yeah we did accept a contract to haul a jet engine into, into the air and go at least 110 meters per second with it. So we're going to slap on a jet engine on it, of course, for our propellant. Uh, not that we had much of a choice. Anyways, we're going to do some test flights here. Because, well, by default the tier 1 uh, runway is notoriously bad. So uh, launching from it can be quite a pain, but in 64k it's doubly so, and you'll see this during our launches here, that our planes tend to skip up or explode at a certain part of the runway. And, uh, and this is about a third of the way through the runway, it's actually, and the runway is actually composed of, th of three separate me meshes. So... Um, well, in, in stock, those mesh edges, they, they are like properly, properly in line with one another. But here, while we look to be in line, because of rounding errors, they really aren't. So our launch profile here is just, yeah, well, well we're, we're grasping for straws here. We're trying to get up into the air before that very edge. And we're doing all kinds of tricks like uh, thrusting statically and, and all of that. that, that at the very edge of the runway and just going going so very very deep into into try hard territory but then i remember that well a runway is well anything's a runway if you're brave enough right well we're we're cowards so we're not going to go for the default runway pretty much Instead, we're going to take off from the grassland. And see that the edge I mentioned there earlier, the ledge, that only stretches out for so long, so you can actually do a safe taxi like that. So here we're going in, uh, in for takeoff, and uh, 
according to Ferrum, our safe takeoff speed should be about 48 meters per second. So, so we just go for that speed or roundabouts with a bit of a margin and then we just pitch up. And you can see the uh, the joystick mod I had have there. That's the RKE joystick, and I think that's that's essential if you're going to be flying uh, planes in Ferrum Aerospace with a keyboard, because the default binary input that will just tear your planes to shreds. This allows you to set up uh, sensitivity for your keyboard input in a way that. Uh, that you can't really do with a stock game. So anyways, remember we need to reach 110 meters per second. We're going to do this by doing a slight dive here. Um, after getting up to some altitude, of course, we don't want to dive into the ground. And we got our contract for fulfilled. That's some money and basically no science. But uh, having this plane turns out to allow us to, to reach more science than we would ever have with a rover. Like flying low science, for instance, but we will also be able to, to land pretty much anywhere within like, I don't know, 600 kilometers or something. And uh, we're trying out the maneuverability of the plane. We're going to do a quick sweep of the VAB. <whistles> yeah, we're not going to crash it, of course. Because we like our Kerbals to stay alive, and this is uh, hard mode in the sense that they go they're going to stay dead if we kill them. Uh, we're not going to land on the runway either, and we're going to come in for a landing here. And this is a very competent glider, so it's going to take quite a while to put this down. So be glad you saw that in time work, because that took a while. Anyways, uh, next time we'll do some more advanced contracts instead of this shit and uh, I'll see you guys then.